Do you feel like you don't speak enough Arabic? That you need to know more words? Then stick around. With these lessons, you'll pick up some of the most common words in just a few minutes. Now, this video is a small portion of our learning program. To get the full lessons, translations, and fluency fast study tools, click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account. Hi everyone, my name is Prihan and this is the Arabic Top Words. Today's topic is 10 phrases to amaze native speakers. So let's get started. I can memorize around 50 new Arabic words a day. The first phrase is I can memorize around 50 new Arabic words a day. <laughs> it's too long, even I cannot memorize it. That sounds tough. <laughs> Good luck. I can watch Arabic movies without subtitles. The next one is I can watch Arabic movies without subtitles. I think it's amazing to watch Arabic movies without subtitles because as you all know, Arabic has a standard Arabic and dialect Arabic and they're so different. So usually all movies are made in the dialect. So if you can listen to the dialect and understand so well without the subtitles, that means that you're very, very good at Arabic. Yeah. I'm learning Arabic all by myself. I'm learning Arabic all by myself. And this is amazing because Arabic is very difficult. So if you decide to learn it all by yourself, then you're a very smart person. All by myself. I completely understood everything you said. I completely understood everything you said. If, if you can understand native speakers without missing anything out, then you're doing a great job, I suppose. It took me only one year to become fluent. It took me only one year to become fluent. And this is amazing. And you can only achieve that by having lots of Egyptian friends you can speak with every day. So you can easily learn Egyptian Arabic fluently. You can speak it fluently in only one year or even less. Arabic is fun and easy to learn. Arabic is fun and easy to learn. And of course, Arabic is fun and easy to learn if you're doing it with us, Arabic Pod 101. Apart from knowing Arabic, I can speak a few other languages as well. Apart from knowing Arabic, I can also speak a few other languages as well. For example, English. Shukran <laughs> Thank you, but it's not my native language actually. Thank you, but it's not actually my native language. I can speak Arabic in more than one dialect. I can speak Arabic in more than one dialect. For example, I can say Shakumako Habibi. It means how are you or what's up, my love, or Habibi, in Iraqi dialect. I can also read Arabic. The next phrase is I can also read Arabic. And if you would like to practice Arabic more, you will most certainly find your favorite books in Arabic translated. And that's it for today. What was your favorite phrase? Can you write it below in the comments? Don't forget to subscribe and comment and visit our website, arabicpod101.com. Bye-bye. You are at a train station where you're looking for the best exit to catch a taxi. Which direction should you go in to get to the taxi stop?
Which direction should you go in to get to the taxi stop? You should head east to get to the taxi stop. الشرق. You are at a bus terminal where you've just bought a long distance ticket. Which seat number are you in? Which seat number are you in? The ticket says that you're in seat 20. ميقعدو رقم 20 You are at a bus stop where you're waiting for the 301 bus. There is a notice posted on the bus timetable. What does the notice say? What does the notice say? The notice reads, the 301 bus does not stop here. Bus رقم 301 لا يقف هنا. You are at a bus terminal where you're attempting to buy a ticket from a ticket counter. There are four different counters. Which counter should you line up at to go to the south side of the city? Which counter should you line up at to go to the south side of the city? The third counter is the counter for bus tickets that go to the south side of the city. You are at a bus terminal where you're reading the schedule for long-distance buses. On which days are there no buses running? On which days are there no buses running? There are no buses running on public holidays and the third Saturday of every month. الأجازات الرسمية والسبت الثالث من كل شهر. Want to speak real Arabic from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at ArabicPod101.com. When learning a new language, we sometimes have a hard time with things like procrastination, discouragement, or failure. But don't panic. With a good strategy, you'll be able to overcome these difficulties. Are you ready to discover the four habits of successful learners? Number one, optimize your time. 
When learning a language, it's important to dedicate time to your studies regularly, even if sometimes it's difficult. You're busy with school, work, family, or friends, but you can spread out your learning throughout the day. Study whenever you have small gaps of time in your busy schedule. This can be when you're on the metro, on your lunch break, or while you're exercising. Our podcast learning format fits perfectly into your tight schedule. Number two, consistency with your chosen method. There are a lot of options when it comes to courses and learning materials. Switching from one method to another can confuse you and disrupt your progress. Focusing on one learning method will make a difference. Our method has been created and optimized by real teachers, so you can stick to it with confidence. Number three, use your language background. Many languages share some commonalities. You can find words that look or sound similar, or even share the same grammar structure. A little bit of language background will give you an edge while learning. Number four, study continuously. People are excited when they start learning a new language. The enthusiasm usually lasts until the first roadblock. This can lead to discouragement and procrastination. But don't burn yourself out. Learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. Don't try to learn it all at once. Break things down into more digestible chunks. Learning step-by-step step might feel slow, but it's an efficient way to learn a language. With patience, motivation, and good resources, you'll master the language. Remember, you can't learn a language overnight, but with motivation and these daily lessons, you'll be on the road to fluency. In the last lesson, we learned the phrases هل تتكلم الإنجليزية? Do you speak English? And هل بإمكانك التكلم بالإنجليزية? Could you speak English? And we mentioned the word من فضلك which means please in Arabic. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use al or Afwan and Ana Asif and other words when apologizing in Arabic. We should use al or Afwan when we want to say excuse me, such as when we are ordering something in a bar or a restaurant. For example, al qahwa min fadlika or Afwan qahwa min fadlika. Excuse me, a coffee please. We can also use it when asking a question. al Madira, أين المحطة? Or, عفواً, أين المحطة? Excuse me, where is the station? Sometimes we also hear people say, من فضلك, or, please, to draw somebody's attention. من فضلك. If the person is a woman, we replace the ending with كي, so it becomes من فضلك. In case you want to use excuse me to apologize instead of asking something, you should say عذراً. It can be used if you accidentally bump into someone on the street. عذراً. Just like عذراً, we can use أنا آسف when apologizing. It literally means I'm sorry or pardon me. As we learned in the last lesson, أنا means I. So the adjective that follows should be modified according to the gender. So if you're a woman, you should say Ana Asifa instead of Ana Asif. All of these phrases can be used for either excuse me or I'm sorry. But if you really want to apologize for something, it might be better to use a different phrase. That phrase is the verb Samahni. Samahni. It can be translated as forgive me in English. It is a bit stronger, but it can be used in both formal and informal situations. Again, since سامحني means that you are asking for the other person's forgiveness, it should be changed according to the gender. So it becomes سامحيني if the other person is a female. سامحيني Now it's time for Carol's tips. Please remember that in most of the Arab countries, if you accidentally bump into someone, you don't say, forgive me, سامحني, which is for a more serious annoyance. Instead, we say, عذراً, or, أنا آسف, excuse me, or, I am sorry. مرحباً, أنا كارول, سررت بلقائك. Hi, I'm Carol, nice to meet you. In this series, العربية في ثلاث دقائق, we're going to learn basic Arabic expressions. It's super easy and it takes only three minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Arabic. There are a few other ways to say it, depending on how formal you want to be. Let's first look at an informal way to introduce yourself in Arabic. مرحباً, أنا كارول, سررت بلقائك. Hi, I'm Carol, it's a pleasure to meet you. مرحباً, 
أنا كارول سررت بلقائك. Now you try it. Start by saying مرحبا which is the equivalent of hi. Then say أنا literally I am followed by your name. أنا كارول is I am Carol. Finally, say nice to meet you. If you're talking to a man, you say سررت بلقائك. If you are talking to a woman, say سررت بلقائك. This phrase means pleasure to meet you. In the English phrase pleasure to meet you, you is a neutral word. You can use it for both men and women. But in Arabic, the word you needs a gender. When you change the last letter in لقائika, a to an e sound, لقائiki, you are actually changing the word you from the male to the female version. Please be careful to use the correct version. Now let's see another way of introducing yourself. In this version, you will say, Hi, my name is Carol, instead of, Hi, I am Carol. And we will learn another way of saying, Nice to meet you. Marhaban, ismi Carol. Tasharraftu bimarifatika. Hi, my name is Carol. I am honored to meet you. Marhaban, ismi Carol. Tasharraftu bimarifatika. What has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a close look at these together. First, marhaban, ana karol, has changed to marhaban, ismi karol. So, instead of saying, hi, I am Carol, we are speaking in a more formal way by saying, hi, my name is Carol. Next, after giving your name, instead of saying, surirtu bilikaika, you say, tasharraftu bimarifatika, or I am honored to meet you, which is a bit more formal. Again, we should not forget to change the ending of the word depending on the gender of the person you're speaking to. It would be تشرفتو بمعرفتك for a man and تشرفتو بمعرفتك in case of a woman. One more time, here are the four ways you learn to introduce yourself in Arabic. Informally, marhaban, ana karol, surirtu bilikaika, if you are speaking to a man, and marhaban, ana karol, surirtu bilikaiki, if you are speaking to a woman. The formal way to introduce yourself is Marhaban, ismi Karol, tasharraftu bimarifatika If the person you're talking to is a man And Marhaban, ismi Karol, tasharraftu bimarifatiki If that person is a woman Now it's time for Carol's tips When you introduce yourself in the Middle East or Northern African countries It's polite to offer your right hand for a handshake Or give three kisses on the cheeks Although the rules vary depending on where you are Arab people place great value on politeness. So, for example, it is considered rude to enter a room or a place without greeting everyone. If you use the right sentence to introduce yourself, they'll definitely be impressed. Marhaban, ana Carol, surirtu bilikaika. Hi, I'm Carol, nice to meet you. In this series, Al Arabiya fi Salasi Dakaik, we're going to learn basic Arabic expressions. It's super easy and it takes only three minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Arabic. There are a few other ways to say it, depending on how formal you want to be. Let's first look at an informal way to introduce yourself in Arabic. Marhaban, ana Carol, surirtu bilikaika. Hi, I'm Carol, it's a pleasure to meet you. Marhaban, ana Carol, surirtu bilikaika. Now you try it. Start by saying marhaban, which is the equivalent of hi. Then, Say Anna, literally I am, followed by your name. Anna Carol is I am Carol. Finally, say nice to meet you. If you're talking to a man, you say surirtu bilikaika. If you are talking to a woman, say surirtu bilikaiki. This phrase means pleasure to meet you. In the English phrase pleasure to meet you, you is a neutral word. You can use it for both men and women. But in Arabic, the word you needs a gender. When you change the last letter in لقائika, a, to an e sound, لقائiki, you are actually changing the word you from the male to the female version. Please be careful to use the correct version. Now let's see another way of introducing yourself. In this version you will say, hi, my name is Carol, instead of, hi, I am Carol. And we will learn another way of saying, nice to meet you. Marhaban, ismi Carol. Tasharraftu bimarifatika. Hi, my name is Carol. I am honored to meet you. Marhaban, ismi Carol. Tasharraftu bimarifatika. What has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a close look at these together. 
First, Marhaban, Anna Carol, has changed to Marhaban, Ismi Carol. So, instead of saying, hi, I am Carol, we are speaking in a more formal way by saying, hi, my name is Carol. Next, after giving your name, instead of saying, surirtu bilikaika, you say, tasharraftu bimarifatika, or I am honored to meet you, which is a bit more formal. Again, we should not forget to change the ending of the word depending on the gender of the person you're speaking to. It would be tasharraftu bimarifatika for a man and tasharraftu bimarifatiki in case of a woman. One more time, here are the four ways you learn to introduce yourself in Arabic. Informally, marhaban, ana karol, surirtu bilikaika, if you are speaking to a man, and marhaban, ana karol, surirtu bilikaiki, if you are speaking to a woman. The formal way to introduce yourself is marhaban, ismi karol, tasharraftu bimarifatika, if the person you're talking to is a man. And marhaban, ismi karol, tasharraftu bimarifatiki, if that person is a woman. Now it's time for Carol's tips. When you introduce yourself in the Middle East or Northern African countries, it's polite to offer your right hand for a handshake or give three kisses on the cheeks, although the rules vary depending on where you are. Arab people place great value on politeness. So, for example, it is considered rude to enter a room or a place without greeting everyone. If you use the right sentence to introduce yourself, they'll definitely be impressed. In the last lesson, we learned how to introduce ourselves in Arabic. Today, we're going to learn how to use good manners as we thank people. هل أنتم جاهزون? Are you ready? فلنبدأ. Then let's start. There are several ways to thank someone. Let's start with the most common phrase, shukran, shukran. Shukran means thank you. To say thank you very much, you just need to add jazilan. Shukran jazilan, shukran jazilan. Shukran is a formal way of saying thank you. If you want to thank someone more casually, say mutashakir if you're a man and mutashakira if you're a woman. Mutashakir, mutashakira. This phrase means, I am grateful, or I am thankful. When someone thanks you, how should you answer? There's no set response like you're welcome in English, but there are a few things you can say. The first is, Bikulli surur. This means with pleasure. Bikulli surur. Another phrase you can say is, Tahta amrika, which literally means, at your service or at your disposal. If you're talking to a woman, you should say Tahta Amriki. Tahta Amrika. Tahta Amriki. It is often used as a funny way of responding to someone thanking you. There are so many ways of saying you're welcome in Arabic. Another one is La Shukra ala wajib, which means don't thank me, it's my duty. La Shukra ala wajib. Now it's time for Carol's tips. Shukran can mean thank you or thanks. Arabic language is very emotional and relations between Arab people are very personal. So what if you want to use an expression that sounds more friendly? In that case, you can use Allah khalik. This is a nice way to thank someone. That means, may God protect you. In the last lesson, we learned how to thank people by saying Shukran and Shukran Jazilan. In this lesson, we learn some of the most common greetings used in Arabic-speaking countries. هل أنتم جاهزون? Are you ready? فلنبدأ. Then let's start. The most common greeting is مرحباً or hi. مرحباً. This is a general way to greet people when you see them. A more cultural greeting is Assalamu alaikum. This means peace be with you and is generally used only by Muslims. We say it when we meet someone and also when we leave. Assalamu alaikum. Someone could respond to Assalamu alaikum with marhaban or hi, but it is more polite to respond to such greetings in the corresponding way. Since Assalamu alaikum means peace be with you, when greeted in that way, we should answer back with Wa alaikum assalam, which literally means peace be with you too. Wa alaykum assalam. Whether you use marhaban, hi, or assalamu alaykum, it is also polite to ask the person how they are. 
كيف حالك؟ How are you? كيف حالك؟ Don't forget that in Arabic, the word you needs to have a gender. So, كيف حالك is good if you are talking to a man, but if you are talking to a woman, you should ask كيف حالك؟ كيف حالك؟ When it's time to leave, you can say وداعاً or goodbye. وداعاً The other person can reply مع السلامة which means be safe. مع السلامة Let's review the phrases you've learned in this lesson. مرحباً is hi. السلام عليكم is peace be with you. The response is وعليكم السلام كيف حالك or كيف حالك is how are you. وداعاً is goodbye. And مع السلامة is be safe. Now it's time for Carol's tips. If you're leaving and you want to show the person that you would like to see them again, you can use إلى اللقاء meaning see you or إلى اللقاء قريبا see you soon. إلى اللقاء إلى اللقاء قريبا. In the last lesson, we learned the most common forms of greetings in Arabic. Do you remember them? We introduced marhaban and assalamu alaikum, as well as shukran and ila lika. In this lesson, we are going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you're asking it in Arabic, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you're saying, even if their answer is no. Are you ready? Then let's start. Here's the basic way to ask if someone speaks English. هل تتكلم الإنجليزية? If you are talking to a male. And هل تتكلمين الإنجليزية? If you are talking to a female. هل تتكلم الإنجليزية? هل تتكلمين الإنجليزية؟ هل means do. You and speak are merged in the same word تتكلم for males and تتكلمين for females. إنجليزية means English. This is an indirect way of asking someone to speak to you in English. There are many ways of making it clear that you're asking the person to speak English to you. For example, هل بإمكانك التكلم بالإنجليزية؟ means could you speak English? هل بإمكانك means could you? Are you able to? Or is it possible to? And is referring to the ability of the person to speak English. Again, if you're talking to a female, you should change the last accent of كا to كي. So the question becomes هل بإمكانك التكلم بالإنجليزية؟ التكلم means speaking and بالإنجليزية is in English. To be more formal, we could add the word please to the request to make it هل بإمكانك التكلم بالإنجليزية من فضلك؟ In this case, the question cannot mean the person's ability to speak English anymore because you are obviously asking them to speak English to you. Since in Arabic, the word please literally means from your favor, it should also be changed according to the person's gender. So, in case of a female, we should also change the ka ending of please in min fadlika to min fadliki. The question becomes, هل بإمكانك التكلم بالإنجليزية من فضلك? The responses you will receive could be one of these three. نعم, yes. نعم. قليلا, a little. قليلا. There are a few ways of saying no in Arabic. لا or كلا. No, I don't speak English. Is لا. أنا لا أتكلم الإنجليزية. لا أنا لا أتكلم الإنجليزية. It is exactly the same structure as in English. لا is no. أنا is I. لا means don't. أتكلم is I speak. And الإنجليزية is English. Since this last one is a negative statement, we need to say لا before the verb أتكلم or speak, 
La literally means no, but when placed before a verb, it negates this verb, becoming don't or doesn't. Notice also that the verb atakallamu is slightly different than tatakallamu, which we learned before. Remember, the verb changes depending on the pronoun used. We are not talking about ana, Arabic for I, thus I do not speak is ana la atakallamu. Now it's time for Carol's tips. For those of you who are not native English speakers, you can obviously use this question with any language you need. Arab people study other languages at school, depending on the country they live in, so maybe you'll get lucky. Just substitute al Inglesia with al Francia for French, al Italia for Italian, al Espania for Spanish, or al Almania for German. Want to speak real Arabic from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at ArabicPod101.com. Hi everyone, my name is Fihan and this is Arabic Top Words. Today's lesson is going to be about 10 ways to save the planet in Arabic. So, let's begin. إعادت التصنيع or إعادت التدوير To recycle إعادت التصنيع or إعادت التدوير To recycle So, for example, you can say إعادة التصنيع مشروع هايل which means recycling is a good project or you can say إعادة التدوير مشروع هايل which is the same thing recycling is a good project يحمي to protect يحمي to protect for example you can say عايزين نحمي البيئة من التلوث we have to protect the environment from pollution إعادة الاستخدام to reuse إعادة الاستخدام to reuse إعادة الاستخدام بتحافظ على موارد البيئة which means reusing helps reserves natural resources يحافظ to conserve يحافظ to conserve for example you can say عايزين نعمل حملة توعية للحفاظ على المية we want to start an awareness campaign to conserve the water تقليل الزبالة to reduce trash تقليل الزبالة to reduce trash and here we can use a word we previously learned, which is إعادة التصنيع or إعادة التدوير, which means to recycle. And we can have a sentence like إعادة التصنيع, إعادة التدوير, بتقلل الزبالة. Recycling helps reducing trash. الاهتمام بالبيئة, to care for the environment. الاهتمام بالبيئة, to care for the environment. For example, you can say, الجمعية دي من أحدافها الاهتمام بالبيئة. This organization aims for caring for the environment. استخدام منتجات صديقة للبيئة To use eco-friendly products استخدام منتجات صديقة للبيئة Which means to use eco-friendly products So for example you can say الشركة دي منتجاتها صديقة للبيئة This company's products are eco-friendly تقليل تلوث الهواء To reduce air pollution تقليل تلوث الهواء To reduce air pollution محتاجين قوانين جديدة لتقليل تلوث الهواء Which means we need new regulations to reduce air pollution. تقليل تلوث المية To reduce water pollution. تقليل تلوث المية To reduce water pollution. So for example, you can say المصانع لازم تقلل تلوث المية Factories need to reduce water pollution. ترشيد الاستهلاك To reduce consumption. ترشيد الاستهلاك To reduce consumption. So for example, you can say عشان نحافظ على الأرض محتاجين نرشد الاستهلاك To protect the earth, we need to reduce consumption Hi everyone, welcome to Arabic Top Words Today we'll do the 20 words you will need for the beach نظارة الشمس Sunglasses نظارة الشمس Sunglasses اشتريت نظارة شمس جديدة I bought new sunglasses Shot Beach Shot Beach For example النهاردة هنفطر على الشط Today we'll have breakfast on the beach سباحة Swimming سباحة Swimming رياضتي المفضلة هي السباحة My favorite sport is swimming شمس Sun شمس Sun النهاردة الشمس حامي قوي The sun is too hot today شجر النخيل Or نخل Palm tree نخل Or شجر النخيل Which means palm tree For example, you can say في مصر دايما بنزرع شجر نخيل على الطرق in Egypt, we usually plant palm trees alongside of the road. Sadafa, seashell. Sadafa, seashell. For example, هنروح نجمع صدف من على الشط. 
We will go collect some seashells from the beach. Mayo. Swimsuit. Mayo. A swimsuit. Halbis el mayo, wenzel el bahre shwayam. I'll put on my swimsuit and swim in the sea for a while. Bahr. Sea. Bahr. Sea. El bahre lono helwa awi naharda. The sea has a beautiful color today. Fil bahre samaka. Samaka. Jet ski. Jet ski. Jet ski. Which means jet ski. For example, you can say, Nefsi arkab jet ski. I want to ride a jet ski. Futa. Tao. Futa. Which means a towel. Munkin tidini futa? Would you give me a towel? Gardal. Bucket. Gardal. Bucket. Hetel gardal. Bring the bucket. Ice box. Cooler. Ice box. Which means a cooler. For example, Maaya fakha fil ice box. I have some fruits in the cooler. El maddu el gazr. Tied. El maddu el gazr. Tied. El maddu el gazr qawi awi naharda. The tide is very strong today. Ten. 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 Which means a tan. For example, I <laughs> zakhud ten. I want to get a tan. Al ghats. Diving. Al ghats. Diving. Yalla nruh nakhtas fi sharm al sheikh. Let's go diving in charm. Ship ship. Flip flop. Ship ship. Flip flop. Mish laia ship ship bitai. I cannot find my flip flops. Sunscreen. 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 Which means a sunscreen. For example, you can say, Niseta hot sunscreen. I forgot to put on my sunscreen. Chamseya. Umbrella. Chamseya. Umbrella. Mehtagin chamseya kbira. We need a big umbrella. Lab al bahr. Beach toys. Lab al bahr. Beach toys. For example, Dayat al al bahr. I lost my beach toys. Awema. Floaters. Awema. Floaters. الأطفال بيلبسوا عوامات قبل ما ينزلوا البحر. Children put on floaters before they swim in the sea. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you liked it. Why don't you tell us below about your favorite beach words? And don't forget to subscribe and like this video and visit our website arabicpod101.com. Bye bye. Hi everyone, I am Prehan and this is Arabic Top Words. Today we're going to do 10 phrases for surviving back to school. Let's get started. شنطة الدهر Backpack The first word we have is شنطة الدهر شنطة الدهر Backpack For example امبارح اشتريت شنطة الدهر Yesterday I bought a backpack زميل Classmate زميل زميل A classmate For example ندى هتروح مع زميلها ندى هتروح مع زميلها ندى will go back home with her classmates واجب Homework واجب Homework For example يلا اعمل الواجب Do your homework امتحان Exam امتحان Exam For example عندي بكرة امتحان I have an exam tomorrow أجازة الصيف Summer break أجازة الصيف Summer break For example أجازة الصيف امتى When is the summer break مدرسة School مدرسة School For example مدرستي جنب البيت مدرستي جنب البيت My school is beside my house يذاكر To study يذاكر To study For example هذاكر رياضة النهاردة هذاكر رياضة النهاردة I'll study math today This is how I study math إحنا في نفس الفصل We're in the same class إحنا في نفس الفصل Yes. إحنا في نفس الفصل. إحنا في نفس الفصل. We're in the same class. إيه المواد اللي بتاخدها? What classes are you taking? إيه المواد اللي بتاخدها? إيه المواد اللي بتاخدها? What classes are you taking? اتخصصت في إيه? What's your major? اتخصصت في إيه? اتخصصت في إيه? What's your major? And in Egypt we usually have two answers. It's either علمي or adabi. علمي means science, like a science major where you study chemistry, math, and biology, or adabi, adabi, arts, where you study geography, history, economy, and I'm, I'm missing something. Ah, philosophy. 
Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to tell us about your favorite subjects in school. And also don't forget to like, subscribe, and visit our website, arabicpod101.com. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye. Nobody said it was easy. Hi, everyone. I'm Pirhan, and this is 10 Must Know Autumn Vocabulary. Let's get started. Sweater. 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 And in, in English, it's sweater. <laughs> wow. You can also say uh, jacket. Uh, for example, you can say السويتر الأحمر هيلي على لبسك. The red sweater matches your clothes. You can say also الجاكيت الأحمر هيلي على لبسك. Usually we use jacket more than sweater. بتمطر rainy. بتمطر rainy. For example, you can say الدنيا دلوقتي بتمطر. It's raining now. Or if you want to say it's about to rain, you can say الدنيا شكلها تمطر. هوا windy. هوا windy. Hawa also means air. For example, you can say Today it's windy. You can also say Today it's very windy. <laughs> There's like a new song like Hawa 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 Hawa. She saw like uh, the guy she has a crush on and she was like, Oh Hawa Hawa. It's so funny. Bert. Cold. Bert. Cold. For example, you can say Yesterday, the weather was so cold. You can also say سائع. It also means cold. And you can say امبارح الجو كان ساعة قوي. برد also means cold as in catching cold. So, for example, you can say الأسبوع اللي فات كله كان عندي برد. Last week, I had a cold. الخريف. Autumn. الخريف. Autumn. For example, you can say الخريف ابتدى. Autumn started. السحاب clouds السحاب which means clouds for example you can say السحاب كتير قوي there are so many clouds or for example you can say السحابة دي شكلها عامل زي الحصان this cloud looks like a horse and so on for example أميز بكم long sleeved shirt أميز بكم long sleeved shirt for example you can say الراجل اللي لابس أميز بكم هو صاحب المحل The man in a long-sleeved shirt is the owner of the shop. Uh, or for example, you can say Which means, today the weather is so hot, so I'm gonna roll up my sleeves. Wara is sugar. Leaves. Wara is sugar. Leaves. Wara is sugar means tree leaves. So wara means leaves and sugar means trees. So tree leaves. For example, you can say Iggenena maliena wara sugar. The garden is full of leaves. Or, الوان وراء الخريف جميلة جدا. The colors of the autumn leaves are so beautiful. عيد الشكر. Thanksgiving. The next one is, عيد الشكر. Thanksgiving. For example, you can say, النهاردة بيحتفلوا بعيد الشكر في أمريكا. They are celebrating Thanksgiving in the USA today. مغيمة. Cloudy. مغيمة. Cloudy. For example, you can say, الدنيا كانت مغيمة أوي الصبح. It was very cloudy in the morning. You can say الدنيا مغيمة أوي دلوقتي شكلها هتمطر. Today it looks very cloudy. I think it's about to rain. That's it for today. I hope you liked the lesson. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and visit our website arabicpod101.com. Hi guys, my name is Nora from arabicpod101.com. Welcome to Ask a Teacher where I will answer some of your most common Arabic questions. The question for this lesson is, are there feminine and masculine inanimate objects in Arabic? Well, I have some good news and some bad news. The good news is that unlike French and Spanish, Arabic doesn't have gender-specific articles. Yay! In Arabic, we use the definite article el for both genders, and there is no indefinite article at all. Double yay! There is more good news. You can tell what gender a noun is from its structure. If you see a ha sound, commonly known as ta marbuta, at the end of a word, then it's definitely feminine and will be conjugated as such. For example, the word shajara, meaning tree. Now for the bad news. There are a lot of nouns that don't end in ta marbuta, but they're still feminine nouns. However, There aren't a lot of them, and once you know that they're feminine nouns, you just have to memorize them the way they are.
An example of this is Sahara, meaning desert. The final part of the noun a is an indication that the word is most likely a feminine noun. It could also be a masculine noun, like the word me, meaning water, which is masculine, so this rule only works with certain structures. But there isn't always a helpful indication. For instance, the word shams, meaning sun, is a feminine word. Do you see at that marbuta? Nope. You have to consciously remember that it's a feminine noun. The last thing you need to know about Arabic feminine and masculine nouns is that they change the conjugation of any verb or adjective that describes them. For instance, we'll look at a noun adjective verb sentence for a masculine noun and for a feminine noun. الفتى الطويل يغني The tall boy is singing. الفتاة الطويلة تغني The tall girl is singing. The first one is masculine and the second one is feminine. See the slight difference in conjugation? Namely, the ta marbuta in the end of al and the ta in the beginning of tughani. Although this might seem challenging at first, it will feel like second nature with practice. If you have any more questions, please leave a comment below and I will see you in the next episode. Salam. Hi everyone, my name is Nora. Welcome to Ask an Arabic Teacher, where I will answer some of your most common Arabic questions. The question for this lesson is, what do country names look like in Arabic? Don't you want to know how your country is pronounced in Arabic? Let's see some of the popular ones. First, let's see some African country names. Al Jazeera, Algeria. Al Maghrib, Morocco. Janoub Afriqiya. South Africa, Madagascar, Madagascar, Ghana, Ghana, Misr, Egypt. What about Egypt's name, Misr? It sounds pretty different from English, doesn't it? Now let's see some European and Asian country names. Syria, Syria, Lebanon, Lebanon, Palestine, Palestine, Iran, Iran. Pakistan, Pakistan, Al Hind, India, Malaysia, Malaysia, Indonesia, Indonesia, Russia, Russia, Asin, China, Al Yaban, Japan, Turkey, Turkey, Al Yunan, Greece, Italia, Italy, Faransa, France. Espania, Spain, Almania, Germany, Al Mamlakatul Mutahida, UK. What about these two? They sound very different. An Nimsa, Austria. The word An Nimsa has Slavic origins. Al Magar, Hungary. Al Magar, which is another word for Hungary. Now let's see some country names in the Americas and the Pacific. America, America, الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية, the U.S., Canada, Canada, المكسيك, Mexico, Colombia, Colombia, البرازيل, Brazil, الأرجنتين, Argentina, Australia, Australia, New Zealand, New Zealand. Other than that, many country names in the world are very similar between Arabic and English. You might have to add an L before it or an A sound after it. All in all, they sound pretty similar. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I will see you in the next episode. Salam. Hi everyone, my name is Nora and this is Ask an Arabic Teacher. The question for this lesson is, are Arabic expressions affected by religion? There are a lot of expressions in Arabic that have Islamic origins. The Quran, which is the holy book of Muslims, was originally written in Arabic. Islam itself emerged from the Gulf region, which is historically an Arabic-speaking region. So, it's no wonder that even modern-day Arabic is heavily influenced by Islam. These expressions shifted from being specifically religious to being purely cultural, meaning that many non-Muslim Arabs use them as well.
Let's see some of these expressions. First we have Insha'Allah. Insha'Allah. Insha'Allah literally means if God wills. It implies that everything happens with the will of God and only if God wills. We use this expression after we say that we will do something or that something will happen or expect it to happen. For example, I will meet you at 6 o'clock, inshallah. Notice the uncertainty in this expression. Many people exploit this expression and use it to mean that they probably won't do what they said they will. So be careful. Next we have Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah literally means thanks be to God. We use this expression not only when something good happens, but also if something bad happens. The implications is that it could have been worse, so we should be thankful to God anyway. Here is a sentence example. I got into an accident, but I came out of it with some bruises, alhamdulillah. Now, let's see the expression, Rabbina ma'ik. Rabbina ma'ik. This one has many versions in different dialects. We're looking at the Egyptian version. It literally means, may God be with you. Egyptians use it when they basically want to say, good luck implying that godly power is way stronger and more important than luck. For example, good luck on your exams. Rabbina ma'ak fil imtahin. The Levantine version of this is Allah ya'inak. Allah ya'inak. And there are many other versions, of course. You can use them on their own, of course, as long as they're in context. I hope you liked our lesson and I will see you in the next episode, inshallah. Salam. Remember, Here's what you can do to learn all of these words by heart. Drill these words with our spaced repetition flashcards, which will help cement these words into your long-term memory. Save them to the Word Bank, your personal vocabulary collection, where you can print out your own study sheets, or review the words with our looped vocabulary slideshow, and play it until you know all of the words. So click the link in the description right now, and sign up for your free lifetime account to get these lessons and study tools.